Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be going over a kind of guide to what you should be doing while you are stocking a fish tank, as well as uh, my personal plan for this tank in the future. Um, so yeah, also, as you might have noticed, this tank is a lot less full than it was in the last two videos. That's because I had a severe ammonia spike that ended up killing the majority of the fish in this tank, uh, which really sucks. Also, the leaf fish did not die in that spike. I moved it to my tank in aquarium because I wanted to put in a bit of smaller fish in this tank that it would have ended up eating. And he He's just too aggressive. He would uh, limit what I can do in the future. Anyways, kind of on to the information section now. So the first thing I look for when I'm planning a stocking for a tank is the compatibility of the fish. So, like for this tank, like I was saying before, the leaf fish is too aggressive for the tetras and for the danios that I want to put in this tank because he's going to try and eat them. Uh, and vice versa, you're not going to go and find like an African cichlid tank and be like, hey, I want to put guppies in there because uh, they're going to get eaten. You got to have compatible fish living together. So that's my number one thing. And my number two thing is actually plan your stockings beforehand. Actually, no, that is number one. Number one is have a concise plan beforehand. Don't go and uh, impulse buy fish. That's how I've ended up with like half my fish and it's caused a lot of problems like my big vieja i have i bought him on a whim so yeah you know it'll be fine i'll throw him in with my oscars and he ended up fighting too many fish and being aggressive so don't just impulse buy fish buy like plan your tanks out obviously if you see some if you see something really cool you want to buy it go home do some research on it go back and buy it the next day uh if it works for your tank yeah just don't impulse buy fish it never ends well at least in my case uh, moving on to my uh, third tip would be size or not not exactly tip but like third thing to look for is size so you're not going to want to buy a fish for like this tank this tank I think is like 26 36 gallons or something like that it's not a very big tank so you're not going to go and buy I don't know something that gets super big like you're not going to go buy ballast sharks or tinfoil barbs for this tank even though it's going to be a community tank you're not going to want to buy fish that are too big the same thing can be said like I wouldn't want to go and buy um I don't know, something really small, like pea puffers to this tank, because they might have a hard time finding food, because they're so small, and they you know, most of them are on the tank all the way. Same thing like betas, you're not going to get a 120 gallon aquarium and put betas in there, because um, it's not going to be able to find the food. So, have a fish that fits the size of your tank. Also, well, that's pretty much it for the stocking, for the actual buying of the fish. But then you're also going to want to have uh, fish that fill out every section of your aquarium, so that's the next section that I'm going to get into. So for me, I like having a very full tank where I like having fish on like the top, uh, kind of the midsection, as well as like going through the gravel and on the bottom of the tank. So that's my goal for this tank. So what I'm going to do for the top, uh, I also like having big schools of fish. But for the top of the tank, that is a little bit harder because not a lot of fish like to hang out there. So I'm going to give a few suggestions for that. I find, even though I'm not a personal fan of them, guppies go at the top just fine. Um, same with balloon mollies, even though they're... Once again, a fish that I'm not a super big fan of. Two fish that I would recommend for the top would be a uh, hatchet fish and golden wonder killifish. They look really cool. Hatchet fish, well, they look like a hatchet, uh, like a axe. So they've got like a body that kind of swoops down in a semicircle. They're really cool. They'll like kind of group together and stay right on the top there. Uh, same with golden wonder killifish. They are a bit longer of a fish. I think like a few inches long. I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't look into them too much, uh, too much before the start of the video. But I've kept them in the past, and they're a whole lot of fun. I've had big groups of them before. They're one of my favorite community fish. Uh, I initially started buying them because they kind of look like Asian arowana, or at least I thought they did. Uh, like mini community arowanas. Um, they're just really cool. They stick on the top. They kind of look like dragon style. I don't know. They're really cool. I really like them. They're something I'd recommend. Um, and then moving on to like schooling fish. That's another thing I really like is having a big school going through the tank, like swimming through the rocks and stuff, or logs or whatever. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this tank personally is I'm going to get a school of zebra danios and a, a school of uh, blood eye tetras. Uh, both those fish are relatively cheap, they're relatively hardy, and they're going to swim through the tank just fine. And, um, you know, they're, they're hardy fish, they're peaceful fish, they're not going to mess with anyone. They get to a size where they're not going to get eaten by the... Actually, there's nothing in this tank that's going to eat anyone. They're, they're not going to get messed with by other fish, that's what I'm trying to say. And then I also like having... Um, kind of showpiece fish in the tank. So as you can see here, I've got my uh, Garami in the back, who's uh, very pretty. Sorry for the hard water deposits from the filter there, make the tank look a little gross. 
I've been meaning to wipe it down, I just haven't got to it yet. The showpiece fish are a must in tanks, in my opinion, where you got something, you look at the tank, you're like, oh, that is a cool fish, what is that? So obviously, gourmies are pretty well known. Um, one thing I really recommend is powder blue dwarf gourmies, because they're really, really vibrant blue, and they're really pretty. This gourmie, of course, now he's hiding now that I'm talking about him, uh, it's uh, more one of the more aggressive ones. Sometimes they don't like to live with other gromies, and this one seems to be one of those where it's kind of uh, it was attacking other fish with a similar shape, uh, except for the leaf fish, because leaf fish, uh, the African leaf fish or whatever, heard I've heard of them referred to as like a type of grommy. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they are. He didn't mess with that one because that one was so much larger than him. But I had an archer fish in here at one point, um, and just the similar body shape. He was messing with him, but the grommy doesn't mess with anyone else. But I can't have more Grommies in this tank, but Grommies, Angelfish, um, that sort of thing, they're pretty cool. You can also get, like, um, what are they called? Electric Blue Acaras. In some cases, I'm not going to do that with this tank because I'm going to have some smaller fish in here. You can do Acaras, you can do, uh, not Labs, uh, Golden, like, German Rams, uh, or, yeah, Ram Cichlids, Crabanza Cichlids, that sort of thing. They look cool because they get colorful, they have a bit of a presence in the tank, so you can do that as, like, a showpiece fish. Um, and then also I like to have kind of like a cleaning crew in the tank. So I would highly recommend Plecos, like cleaning crew as well as stuff that's just going to chill out on the bottom. So you can go with, um, like Plecos, loaches, catfish, that sort of thing. What I've got going on in this tank right now is I've got a common Pleco, or not a common Pleco, sorry, a Bristol's Pleco, a clown Pleco, uh, three bumblebee catfish, two banjo catfish, and I think that's it right now. But I'm going to go for, um, four auto catfish to kind of help keep it a little bit more clean. So Pandagars, which are really cool, uh, they're like orange-black stripes, I think. I haven't kept them in a little while, but I've seen them in the stores, so they're really neat. And also a rabbit snail. There's, you know, snails are nice. They're not going to keep the tank super clean, but they provide like a little bit of a different shape in the tank, just to break it up a little bit, and they're neat. Um, yeah, also, I really like having other fish that kind of like swim in through the school, like, not necessarily schooling fish, but fish that interact with them, like other peaceful community fish. So I'm going to go with a breeding group of uh, live bears. But you can also go with, um, like, smaller groups of tetras or, like, what I said, live bears or other groups of danios. Just stuff that's kind of peaceful and swimming through the top and the middle of the tank. Personally, I'm going to go with a bunch of sword tails and a bunch of Dalmatian mollies and probably white or, like, silver mollies as well. Because they're really eye-catching and they just, you know look at the tank and you're like oh my god vibrant white fish you see it it just shines out and it's really cool but yeah that is pretty much all i wanted to say i kind of just wanted to go over what i'm going to do with this tank it is in need of new fish obviously because there is like nothing in it i also wanted to go over like what i did what i look for when i'm stocking a tank and what you should look for so just to recap if you want schooling fish some fish at the top some fish kind of in the middle so like the mollies and that sort of thing as well as a fish that kind of like clean up the tank, as well as like fish that stay on the bottom. So you can do like quarry catfish or loaches and stuff like that. But yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful in some way. I hope I actually got my point across. Uh, and yeah, if you did enjoy it, please remember to like, like the video, subscribe, uh, comment if you have any questions. I, I'm just doing this for fun. So I really like answering questions, that sort of thing. Fish keeping is a hobby of mine. It's a passion of mine. I really like to spread the hobby. So if you got any questions, shoot them down in the comments. I'll respond to you as soon as I can. Yeah. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a nice day.